the Nigeria's Debt Management Office, that's the DMO, released a statement yesterday, that's Thursday, July 12, 2023, stating that the country has fulfilled its debt service obligations by redeeming a $500 million euro bond on its scheduled date. And that same date is still July 12, 2023. And to talk us through everything we need to know about the euro bonds, the impact on our economy, our reserves, and of course, um, Exactly what is even euro bonds for people that even do not know what euro bonds are is Adem Idushoko, economist, pro share. Thank you for joining me today. How Thank you, you doing? for having me. I'm good. That kicks us into the conversation for today. I want to talk about the euro bond that um, was repaid and um, DMO released a statement regarding that yesterday. Um, first off, let's circle back a little bit for people that might not even understand what euro bonds stand for and what it means. Exactly what are euro bonds? Okay, euro bonds are debt instruments too, but they're slightly different from the nominal debt instrument. So we have the domestic debt instrument, we have the euro bond debt instrument, and debt instrument, and we also have the diaspora bond debt instrument. So for the euro bond, it's a debt instrument issued in other currencies than your domestic currency. So in the case of Nigeria now, it's a debt issued in other currencies, not in Naira, just like we have in domestic ones. So the fact that it's euro bond doesn't necessarily mean that it is only done in euros, no. Particularly the one in Nigeria is actually done in dollars. This particular one that actually was the matured, mm. it's done, it was actually in dollars. So that is just the difference about it. So they've raised $500 million. So it's time to redeem it and they fully made the payment as at 12, 2023, July 12, 20. Now with the redemption of the $500 million, yes, I need to be sure I'm correct. I'm correct. I'm calling out the right figures, $500 million. With the redemption of this euro bond, what exactly does this mean for Nigeria's future access to international capital markets? I mean, we've kept uh, we've kept to whatever it is, the redemption, and we've paid, this is the fourth, right? And we've been able to pay up the fourth, I mean, successfully. What exactly does this mean for Nigeria's future access to international capital markets? Okay, so we have, in an environment that we have, Debt default is quite high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've seen Ghana defaulted in billions of euro bonds. They even had to restructure their domestic euro and uh, domestic bond. We've seen Zambia and uh, actually default in twenty twenty. So that suggests that emerging markets are actually tagged currently with um debt default. So it's actually a milestone for the country being able to pay back those five hundred million uh, million uh, dollars during this period. So it gives a sort of positive signals to investors. Investors will probably look at the our strong commitment to fulfilling our obligations. So that can be positive in terms of inflows. We, are, we might see more participation in the euro bond market. That's the market currently. We've been seeing that since the emergence of the new administration. The policies that the policy that they've been implementing suggest like maybe a rebound in terms of the economy. So we've been seeing more participation, we've seen yields drop significantly. So with this payment, repayment and timely repayment again, it should sink down more we have got more investors we have in the participation in the euro bond market. As regards the future insurance, it's also positive for future insurance. That means that when we issue, we have investors might be quite attracted to it. We have we might also see it positively affecting our credit rating. We had a downgrade of our credit rating in Q1 2023 by Moody's was downgraded to CA1, suggesting a more deeper jump one. So if with this space and the policies. We have we've seen some companies, we actually some reports suggesting that a possible upgrade of our credit rating. So with this timely payment, we have the new policies, we might see our ratings actually improve and see a, a notch upward in terms of our ratings. So it's in, in whole, it's actually very positive for the country. We might see future insurances at a lower, cheaper amount compared to the interest rate environment right now. Just a sidebar to this conversation, does this the the current administration inherited about seventy seven trillion naira debt um, upon uh, assumption of office. Does this have anything to do with the seventy seven trillion naira? I mean, this debt. Does it have anything to do with it? Definitely it does because we're going to see the euro bond portion. That's the under the external debt. We have our external debt as a Q one twenty twenty three. It was at nineteen trillion. So we'll see a, a slight cut down. So let us just subtract. We have it from that particular five hundred million dollars. We're going to see it drop, but we have the adjustment might not be so significant because we have to look at the other factors. And the first one is the securitization of the ways and means. 
we've seen it, it was approved in Q2 2023. Mm -hmm. So that means that we might see that feed into the total debt size when the result for H1 comes out. The Q1 data for, from DMO comes out. So we'll see our debt actually increase, not decrease because of the payment of the euro bond. So we'll see those adjustments will actually make our debt increase so much. Another thing we should consider is also the currency devaluation. So we've seen mm -hmm. the floating, right. the modification, the unification of the exchange rates. Adjusting the external debt to the current exchange rates would actually show a significant increase. So we might see our debt even rise beyond the 77 trillion that you claim that, <laughs> that, that I claim yes. before, that they told yes, us. As suggested <laughs> by some economists. Yeah. We might see because currently it's at Q1, total debt is at 49 trillion. So 49 trillion plus the 23 trillion ways and means, then we'll now incorporate the exchange rate change that will actually make it rise above 80 trillion. Possibly, that's our estimation. My C is right so much. That's quite high. Um, so speaking about the impact on our reserve, because I understand that um, euro bonds are being paid or repaid from our foreign exchange reserves. That's where they get repaid or redeemed from. Um, we have a, a time frame from now until November 2025 to pay the next euro bond, to redeem the next euro bond. How will this impact all of this that we've spoken about today how does this impact our reserves okay yes with this payment definitely we're going to see our reserve further deplete we have we've been seeing a depletion since 2021 so as of december 2021 it was around 41 billion dollars mm -hmm. it has declined significantly to start this year we saw it around 37 billion dollars mm -hmm. that was on january 1 2023 and so far that's Depreciated by 80 percent. We have as at the last data had released, we saw it around 34, 34 billion dollars. That's at 11th of July 2023. So the deduction definitely will make it further drop. Yeah. But there's a positive part of it. We have the unification of the exchange rate suggests that we'll have less we have the amount to use for intervention is definitely going to drop. So that is positive. We might not see the fast pace. Of the fall that we've seen in terms of the foreign reserves, it will, it will not follow that sequence any other any longer. Then also, I feel like the fight against oil theft might be productive. We might see that our oil production per day might actually improve. Yes, it might improve if it's being successful, if quality measures are being kept in place to attack and and actually to dismantle this oil theft issue, this reoccurring oil theft issue. Another thing is that the two years are actually sufficient for us to boost our reserve to, to make the 1.1 billion payment that we have due for November 2025. So I feel like we have ample time if it's well done, if the right policies are kept in place, we might see a significant inflow in terms of um, foreign, foreign, we are foreign currency. Then there's a possibility that we might even issue another euro bond. So that will actually accrue, it will actually positively impact the foreign reserve. Very well said. So, in other words, what you're trying to say is that if we have, if we work on our exports, yes. oil thefts, we deal with oil thefts, and definitely it gives us ample time yes. to prepare for the next uh, redemption of the euro bond, which of course is in November 2025. Yes. And that's about 1.1 billion dollars. Yes. And two years after, we have another 1.5 million billion dollars yes. due for it. Thank you very much for shedding light and giving us insight as to this. I mean, I did not know so much about this, but now we're very much clear, and I'm sure that a lot of people at home are also clear about the euro bond, the redemption, the impact, and all that there is to know about our effects and exportation. Thank you very much for watching. I am Ayemide Kutoye.